disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, DMARDs, are used to treat rheumatic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and other autoimmune conditions. When considering DMARDs in pregnancy, the safety of both the mother and the fetus is paramount. Here's a summary of the commonly used DMARDs and their implications in pregnancy. 1. Conventional synthetic DMARDs. Hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, considered safe during pregnancy, often used in lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, can reduce disease activity without significant fetal risk. Sulfasalazine, considered safe, often used in inflammatory arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. Supplementation with folic acid is recommended due to interference with folate metabolism. Azathioprine, generally considered safe, commonly used in lupus and other autoimmune conditions. Doses should be kept within recommended limits to reduce fetal risks. Methotrexate, contraindicated in pregnancy due to its teratogenic effects, must be stopped at least three months before conception. Leflunamide, contraindicated in pregnancy due to teratogenic effects. Cholestyramine washout is recommended for women planning pregnancy to clear the drug from the system. Cyclosporine and tacrolimus, can be considered in pregnancy, but should be used with caution, often reserved for severe disease when other options are not feasible. Number two, biologic DMARDs, tumor necrosis factor, TNF inhibitors. Most are considered low risk, particularly during the first and second trimesters. Sertilizumab is preferred as it minimally crosses the placenta. It's recommended to discontinue use in the third trimester if possible to reduce neonatal immune suppression risks. Rituximab, generally avoided during pregnancy due to limited safety data. If necessary, it is used with caution, typically reserved for severe cases. Tocilizumab, limited data, generally avoided during pregnancy due to potential risks. Abitacept, insufficient data on safety, typically avoided. Anakinra, limited data but has been used in some cases with no apparent teratogenic effects. Caution is advised. Three. Targeted synthetic DMARDs, Janus kinase JAK inhibitors, e.g. tofacetinib, not recommended in pregnancy due to potential risks. General recommendations, preconception counseling. Women with rheumatic diseases should receive preconception counseling to optimize medication regimens. Planning pregnancy, some DMARDs should be discontinued before conception, while others can be continued safely throughout pregnancy. Close monitoring. Pregnant women on DMARDs should be closely monitored by a multidisciplinary team, including a rheumatologist and an obstetrician, to ensure the best outcomes for both mother and baby. Would you like more information on specific DMARDs or recommendations for managing rheumatic disease in pregnancy? The use of DMARDs during lactation requires careful consideration, balancing the health of the mother and the potential risks to the infant through breast milk. Here's a summary of the safety of various DMARDs during breastfeeding. 1. Conventional synthetic DMARDs. Hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, considered safe during breastfeeding. Minimal amounts are excreted into breast milk, and no adverse effects have been reported in breastfed infants. Sulfasalazine generally considered safe. Only small amounts pass into breast milk and adverse effects in infants are rare. Monitoring for signs of jaundice in the infant is advisable. Azathioprine can be used during breastfeeding with caution. Active metabolites are present in breast milk in low concentrations. Monitoring the infant's blood count may be recommended. Methotrexate not recommended during breastfeeding, excreted in breast milk, and has the potential for toxicity in the infant. Leflunamide, not recommended during breastfeeding due to its long half-life and potential for toxicity. Cyclosporin, can be used with caution during breastfeeding. Low levels are present in breast milk, but monitoring of infant renal function and blood pressure may be recommended. Tacrolimus, can be used with careful monitoring. Limited data suggest minimal excretion into breast milk, but close monitoring of the infant is advisable. NASH 2, biologic DMARDs, tumor necrosis factor, TNF inhibitors, infliximab, adalimumab, etanercept. These are considered compatible with breastfeeding. They are large molecules and only minimal amounts are transferred into breast milk. No significant adverse effects in infants have been reported.
sertilizumab, particularly safe for breastfeeding as it does not cross into breast milk significantly due to its structure. Rituximab, limited data, but some studies suggest low levels in breast milk. Due to the lack of long-term safety data, it is generally used with caution. Tocilizumab, limited data on breastfeeding safety, generally avoided unless necessary. Abitacept, insufficient data, use with caution or avoid during breastfeeding. Anakinra, limited data but appears to have low excretion in breast milk, use with caution. Three, targeted synthetic DMARDs, Janus kinase jack inhibitors, e.g. tofacitinib, not recommended during breastfeeding due to potential risks. General recommendations. Breastfeeding decisions. The decision to breastfeed while on DMARDs should involve a careful discussion between the mother and her healthcare team, considering the potential risks and benefits. Monitoring. If DMARDs are used during breastfeeding, infants should be monitored for any adverse effects, especially when using drugs with limited safety data. Would you like more detailed guidance on a specific medication or condition during lactation? In late pregnancy, the use of DMARDs should be carefully considered to balance disease control and minimize potential risks to the fetus. Here's a summary of DMARDs that are considered relatively safe during late pregnancy. Conventional synthetic DMARDs. 1. Hydroxychloroquine, HCQ safe to use throughout pregnancy, including late pregnancy, well tolerated, and has no known significant risks to the fetus in any trimester. Two, sulfasalazine, safe for use throughout pregnancy, including late pregnancy. It's important to ensure adequate folic acid supplementation. Three, azathioprine, generally considered safe for use in late pregnancy, typically used in conditions like lupus and other autoimmune diseases with no significant increase in fetal risks when used appropriately. Biologic DMARDs. One, tumor necrosis factor, TNF inhibitors. Sertilizumab, preferred TNF inhibitor in late pregnancy. Due to its structure, it minimally crosses the placenta, reducing the risk of neonatal immune suppression. Etanercept, adalimumab, infliximab, these TNF inhibitors can be used in late pregnancy if needed, though discontinuation before the third trimester is often recommended to avoid neonatal immune suppression. If continued, close monitoring is advised. 2. Anakinra. Limited data, but it has been used safely in some cases in late pregnancy. It may be considered when other options are not suitable. General guidelines for late pregnancy. Discontinuation of biologics. For most biologic DMARDs, especially monoclonal antibodies like infliximab and adalimumab, it's often recommended to discontinue use by the 30th to 34th week of pregnancy to minimize fetal exposure and avoid neonatal immune suppression. Sertilizumab is an exception as it has minimal placental transfer. Monitoring. If a biologic DMARD is continued into late pregnancy, careful monitoring of the newborn for any signs of immune suppression or infection is crucial. Delivery planning. Coordination with an obstetrician and pediatrician is essential for managing delivery and postnatal care, especially if biologics have been used in late pregnancy. Would you like more detailed advice on specific conditions or additional information on delivery considerations? Some DMARDs need to be discontinued before pregnancy due to potential risks to the developing fetus. The time required to discontinue a drug before attempting conception depends on the drug's half-life and teratogenic potential. Here's a summary of commonly used DMARDs and their recommendations for discontinuation before pregnancy. Conventional synthetic DMARDs. 1. Methotrexate. Discontinuation must be stopped at least psychiatry three months before attempting conception for both men and women. Reason. It is a known teratogen and can cause significant fetal malformations. Two, leflunamide. Discontinuation must be stopped at least two years before conception due to its long half-life and potential teratogenicity. Alternative, a cholesterol washout, eight grams three times daily for 11 days, can be used to eliminate the drug faster after which blood levels of leflunamide should be checked to ensure clearance, 0 0.0 milligrams per milliliters. If clearance is confirmed, conception can be considered sooner. Three, 
mycophenolate mofatal, MMF, discontinuation, should be stopped at least six weeks before conception. Reason, it is teratogenic and associated with a high risk of congenital malformations. Four, cyclophosphamide, discontinuation, should be stopped at least three months before conception. Reason, it is teratogenic and may lead to fetal malformations and miscarriage. Five, cyclosporin and tacrolimus, discontinuation, not necessarily required if deemed essential for disease control. However, careful risk-benefit assessment and close monitoring are essential. Biologic DMARDs, one, tumor necrosis factor, TNF inhibitors, etinercept, infliximab, adalimumab, discontinuation, ideally stop two to three months before conception. Reason, these biologics cross the placenta, especially during the third trimester. However, if necessary, some patients may continue them until conception or early pregnancy under close supervision. Sertilizumab, discontinuation, not necessarily required before conception due to minimal placental transfer. It can be continued through pregnancy if needed. Two, rituximab, discontinuation, should be stopped six to 12 months before conception. Reason, it has a long half-life, up to six months, and may affect the fetal immune system. Three, tocilizumab, should be continuation, should be stopped at least three months before conception. Reason, limited data, but potential risks to fetal development. Four, abidocept, discontinuation, should be stopped 10 weeks before conception. Reason, limited data, but it's recommended to avoid during pregnancy. Five, Anakin discontinuation, generally recommended to stop one month before conception. Reason, limited safety data during pregnancy. Targeted synthetic DMARDs. One, Janus kinase jack inhibitors, e.g. tofacitinib, baracitinib, discontinuation should be stopped one month before conception. Reason, these drugs are not recommended during pregnancy due to potential risks of teratogenicity and fetal harm. General recommendations. Preconception counseling. It's critical for patients on DMARDs to receive preconception counseling to optimize disease control and ensure medication safety during pregnancy. Shared decision-making. A personalized approach is essential, balancing the need for disease control with the safety of the fetus. Close collaboration between rheumatologists, obstetricians, and sometimes other specialists is necessary. Would you like more detailed information on any specific drug or condition management related to pregnancy? Managing an active systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE patient during pregnancy requires a multidisciplinary approach, balancing disease control with minimizing risks to both the mother and the fetus. Here's an in-depth overview of key considerations. One. Preconception counseling. Disease control. Ideally, SLE should be in remission or well-controlled for at least six months before conception to reduce the risk of complications. Medication review. Preconception counseling includes adjusting medications to ensure that those with potential teratogenic effects are discontinued and replaced with safer alternatives. Risk assessment. Patients with a history of lupus nephritis, antiphospholipid syndrome, APS, or anti-RARO SSA and anti-ELA SSB antibodies should be closely monitored due to higher risks of complications like preeclampsia, fetal loss, and neonatal lupus. Two, monitoring during pregnancy. Frequent assessments. Patients with active SLE require frequent follow-ups, including laboratory tests to monitor disease activity e.g. complete blood count, renal function, complement levels, and anti-DSDNA antibodies. Fetal monitoring. Regular ultrasound scans to assess fetal growth and amniotic fluid levels are essential. Doppler studies can assess for placental insufficiency, especially in high-risk pregnancies. And three, medications during pregnancy. The management of active SLE in pregnancy involves using medications that are safe for both the mother and the fetus. Glucocorticoids. Low-dose prednisone or prednisolone is considered safe and is often used for managing flares. Methylprednisolone can also be used. High doses may be required during severe flares, but should be minimized to avoid complications like gestational diabetes, hypertension, and fetal growth restriction. Hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, first-line therapy for maintaining disease control during pregnancy. 
safe and beneficial for reducing the risk of flares, preeclampsia, and congenital heart block in neonates of mothers with anti-Rho SSA and anti-LA SSB antibodies. Azathioprine, safe for use in pregnancy at doses 2 mg kilograms per day, often used in patients with lupus nephritis or severe SLE who require steroid sparing agents. Low-dose aspirin, recommended for all pregnant women with SLE to reduce the risk of preeclampsia typically started by the end of the first trimester. Heparin, low molecular weight heparin, LMWH, indicated for patients with antiphospholipid syndrome, APS, to prevent pregnancy loss and thrombosis. LMWH is preferred over unfractionated heparin due to a more favorable side effect profile. Calcium and vitamin D, important for bone health, especially if glucocorticoids are used. IV immunoglobulin, IVIG, can be considered in refractory cases or in patients with APS who have experienced recurrent pregnancy loss despite anticoagulation therapy. 4. Medications to avoid during pregnancy. Cyclophosphamide, contraindicated due to teratogenicity. Mycophenolate mofetil, associated with an increased risk of congenital malformations. Methotrexate, known teratogen and contraindicated during pregnancy. Leflunamide, teratogenic and contraindicated. Warfarin, avoided due to its association with fetal abnormalities and bleeding complications. Five, managing flares during pregnancy, mild flares, typically managed with low dose prednisone or prednisolone. Moderate to severe flares may require higher doses of steroids and in some cases, the addition of azathioprine or intravenous methylprednisolone pulses. Lupus nephritis, active lupus nephritis during pregnancy can be managed with steroids and azathioprine. In severe cases, plasma exchange or IVIG may be considered. Six, complications and special considerations. Preeclampsia and eclampsia. Pregnant women with SLE are at higher risk for preeclampsia, particularly if they have lupus nephritis or antiphospholipid antibodies. Blood pressure should be closely monitored. Fetal growth restriction. SLE increases the risk of placental insufficiency, leading to intrauterine growth restriction, IUGR. Regular fetal growth scans are essential. Neonatal lupus. Infants born to mothers with anti-Rho SSA and anti-LA SSB antibodies are at risk for neonatal lupus, which can manifest as congenital heart block or cutaneous lupus. Close monitoring and fetal echocardiography are recommended for these pregnancies. Preterm delivery. The risk of preterm delivery is higher in SLE patients, particularly in those with active disease. Early planning for delivery in a center with a neonatal intensive care unit, NECU, is important. Seven, delivery and postpartum care. Timing of delivery. Delivery is typically planned between 37 and 39 weeks, depending on maternal and fetal status. In cases of severe preeclampsia or active lupus nephritis, earlier delivery may be necessary. Mode of delivery. Vaginal delivery is preferred unless there are obstetric indications for a cesarean section. Postpartum flares. The postpartum period is a high-risk time for lupus flares. Close monitoring is essential, and pre-pregnancy medications may need to be resumed or adjusted. Breastfeeding should be encouraged with compatible medications, e.g. hydroxychloroquine, low-dose prednisone. 8. Multidisciplinary care. Team approach a multidisciplinary team including a rheumatologist, obstetrician, preferably a maternal fetal medicine specialist, and a pediatrician should be involved in the care of a pregnant patient with active SLE. Patient education. Educating the patient on the importance of medication adherence, regular monitoring, and recognizing signs of flares or complications is crucial. This comprehensive approach can help optimize outcomes for both the mother and the baby in the context of active SLE during pregnancy. Would you like to focus on any specific management aspects?